Well, well done, first of all. Thank you. And uh, thank you to Tom and Massa for, you know, sharing my pain. Because, uh, uh, yeah, this is basically what I go through on a daily basis for my life, for my job now. So, uh, yeah, and I mean, um, I'm not here to promote myself, but in terms of what I'm talking about really is, um, I guess this talk is a little bit geared towards finding other promoters who will achieve, help you achieve what you want out of the tour. So uh, one thing we do at Chaos Theory, all of us in the team, is try as much as possible to take every little detail out of the band's hands as much as possible. So they, on, on the event, all they have to do is turn up and play. I do give them tips before the shows and the lead up to shows on how they can use what we've got to promote their, the gig themselves to their own fans as best as possible. Um, but on the show, you shouldn't really have too much to do unless you're running the show, in which case, yes, you do have to do a lot of other stuff. But um, yes, sir. I need a microphone. Do you give them tips on how to handle the sound man? Uh, I handle the... <laughs> <laughs> I give the sound man tips on how to work with the band. Yes. Hello, yes. Um, I just wanted to say I think all bands should have to have at some point an experience of playing a covers gig where you not only have to liaise with directly with the owners of the bar, you have to be solely responsible for the entertainment all night. Um, you have to do the sound yourself. You have to set up the PA yourself. It's not just as simple as like doing a bit of promotion and providing backline or whatever. I think all bands should, should have to do that at some point to realise actually how much goes into setting up a gig. Why is that? Well, because... Otherwise, bands get spoiled. They, like um, Tom was saying yeah. to me earlier, yeah. like um, a band was complaining about not having a DI box. They cancelled the gig because they didn't have a DI box for the guitar. You know? <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I've, I look after a couple of bands across the country, about 20, and I had a band playing uh, Loughborough on Friday night. And I found a band told me that the gig was kind of, I didn't play it. I found out from the promoter that they went home because they got to the gig, there was no DI box, and they didn't want to play because they couldn't put their acoustic guitar through the PA and they had given me a completely another story. And it's an example of how ridiculous, and it, I was so annoyed. They got a really annoyed email, they haven't emailed me back yet. Um, but yeah, it's just an example of why bands should do it, because now he was gonna offer them another gig, now they've lost it. Oh dear, and that's a shame. they will now be blacklisted. Yeah, and well, guys. fair enough as well, from the sounds of it. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, um, well, one thing that's important is, like I said, is idiot proof everything. So I preempt as much as I can with bands so these things don't crop up anymore, only because these things have happened to me a lot. So, um, but yeah, um, one thing I think really important, and the more I started working with the photographers, the uh, other people in the team, the artists, the video people, the sound guys, all that, is I've understood that Chaos Theory was started to just promote musicians and deal, help them deal with the difficulties of the industry. And what I've realized is every single person involved in every aspect of the industry faces their own challenges. And for anyone, the musician to undermine and not show the respect or decency to the sound guy, the promoter, whatever, or vice versa, is where things fall down. So we all really have to understand that we are very much working together on this and we all have a, an important role to play. And all it takes is one person to take it less seriously or show a little bit of respect for the effort that other people make in their role for things to fall down. So, I'm really glad you brought that up because that's important. It's a much wider picture. And at the end of the day, we're all, we're all in it for the same thing. We want, to, we want to hear great music. We want great music to be heard. We want to put on great gigs. We want to hear, you know, get it out there. So why, would, why do we hear promoters whinging about bands or bands whinging about promoters or whinging about venue managers and all? We all want the same thing. It's just we all have different issues and priorities and challenges. But if we all work together, it's going to be easy. Does that make sense? Uh, I want one other thing. I've brought it up already. I really have to make this, make this point. Um, take merch to your gigs. Seriously, take merch to your gigs. It's so annoying when I see a really amazing band who just, oh, yeah, we keep forgetting the merch. Oh, we forgot it again. Oh, well, why? Why? You're so good. And you cannot underestimate the power of impulse, okay? Yeah, sure, the odd music geek like myself and a handful, a minority will actually... Figure, we'll go on the website, for the, find the, the web page for the event that happened the day before, find the link for the band or Google them and find their links and then download their music or find their page. Sure, some people will make that effort. Most people won't. They need something put in their hand. If you haven't got stuff for sale, which you should as soon as possible, but have a good quality product, then, uh, 
then uh, that people actually want to buy and don't feel hard done by. But yes, um, you need, if you haven't got that, then cut out flyers. Right, I saw one person, which I, I thought it was amazing. She hadn't got any merch or anything quite ready in time for the gig. She wrote her website and MySpace and Facebook on an A4 piece of paper and stuck it to the mic stand. And that was enough, all right? Just something, and just pointed to it. Bands tend to, you know, not make a big deal. Because we hate being self-promoting assholes, they don't promote themselves on stage. Hi, we are this band name, very, very clearly, so everyone can hear it, not, oh, yeah, 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 you can buy some merch over there, like, what the hell, what, what are we called? Oh, well, they're awesome, next band, let's buy a beer, all right? So, yeah, like, you've got to tell people who you are, to promote yourselves, don't wait for someone else to do it. Yes, if you're on, if you're on a gig run by uh, Massa and OARC, yeah, they'll probably compare it and introduce the bands. Not everyone does that, so do it yourself, tell people about it, have stuff there, and make sure people can find you. Make it easy for them to be your fan, because loads of people, you must have played loads of gigs where people loved you and thought, oh yeah, that band was great, and then you'll never hear from them again, and that's a waste. That's a serious waste, and that's a shame. And even if you're just playing it for fun or for experience, that's somebody who latch onto you, and you know what, they might find it very exciting to watch you develop and become the career artist that you want to be eventually. So, yes, Tommy. Just to remind, uh, in 10 minutes, let, let's start wrapping up all final points, wrapping up so we can uh, finish the conversation with some takeaways. Um, yeah, so, so we don't get too much for a while. Oh, okay. Well, that's good, because I've reached my conclusion. So, uh, uh, shall I, do you want me to take questions? Or shall I do, say, I'll just finish up, and then you can all tell me why you think I'm right or wrong, or just talk to each other and ignore me. So, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, first of all, uh, make sure, first, I just, want to make that point, impulse, impulse, impulse. Take merch, take flies, make it, it obviously if it doesn't look good, uh, make it, uh, just hand write stuff, make an effort to do stuff for your, make sure there's stuff in people's hands. But all right, I've got three points for my conclusion then, just to wrap up everything that I've been waffling on about for like an hour and a half or something. I thought I would have like 10 minutes of material, that's pretty good going. So um, uh, yeah, know what you want to be, know what you want to do, first of all, okay? And that means, you know, all the things I said, basically. But, uh, yeah, but yeah, like know what you want to be. Differentiate the different ways there are to earn money as a musician and identify what ways, which of those ways you want to make money from, okay? And there is more than one usually. I've, I don't know many people who just do make their money one way as a musician. Uh, prepare, which means create a good product for each of these scenarios, okay? Which means starting off with the good recordings, and uh, you get full credit for that, Dan. But uh, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Uh, f good quality recordings, good quality, you know, well, a website, some sort of web presence, something. I mean, you've got sites like Bandcamp now, which kind of do all the work for you. So you can use them, they're free. Put your web art on there, and it's got, you know, stuff that people can download or just stream, or you can sell it online. And it's completely you who's in control of how it's done. So even if you haven't got a website or web designer, use things like Bandcamp and, you know, just make it a product that looks a little bit more professional than a MySpace or a Reverb Nation page, which kind of just makes that little leap from, okay, that's an unsigned band having a go to a band that, okay, they've got a serious product, okay? And then, once you've got that product, target audiences appropriately based on the type of musician that you want to be. Identify your audience by, you know, going to the gigs and blah, 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 all the things I said that I'm sure you were making diligent notes. And, um, yeah, just target everyone appropriately, essentially, okay? So make sure that you aim for the right people. If you do these things, I think you'll find yourselves a lot less frustrated and wasting a lot less time and energy in the wrong places, essentially. Does that make sense? Yeah? All right, have I done that well? Yeah, is that good? Yeah, cool. All right, so, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you. Hey, uh, I have a question. Uh, mm. Have you done any experiments around the concept of a gig? So I'm talking in terms of going outside of just the idea of a band on a stage in a room somewhere. So experimenting with the location, experimenting with, uh, I don't know, there must be different things that you're going to experiment. Have you done anything like that or have you seen, been to gigs where, because uh, for example, um, Tommy did one where he had, it was kind of performance art was involved. I've seen people at open mic nights, uh, there was one who was a, tal a very talented um, artist mm -hmm. and he had a projection on the wall uh, of slides of graphic art that went along with his songs. So. 
have to you, you, have you seen anything like that that you thought was great, or did you do anything like that yourself with your promotion? Yes, to both. Uh, um, yeah, I've seen a lot more than I have done because uh, I'm always going to gigs and basically stealing ideas from better promotions than me. Uh, but uh, yeah, I've, uh, aside from the gigs in venues, we've uh, done a variety of things. Like uh, we'll lo locate unusual venues. There's a place uh, I've worked with a couple of times in Shoreditch called St. Leonard's Church. Uh, in 2011, we launched Joe Quayle's debut album there, The Cellist. Uh, she, we had a video made of a certain uh, artistic project, a desert in Australia called the Pilbara. She'd composed a, uh, a string quartet piece to it, so that was played while the video was projected. Uh, we also had artwork on um, or auction, which was available for sale on auction uh, from the same region, uh, which was just photography and artwork of that region. And also we had Miss Pole Dance New Zealand, 2009, come over and do, she choreographed a lot for the Cirque du Soleil. And uh, she came and did improvised aerial dance on a freestanding pole to one of the pieces that Joe Quill had written on her cello. So we do things like that. Last year, we did a project called The Cave, which was in the basement of Shoreditch Town Hall. And that was an audiovisual experiment done by an artist. That wasn't a gig at all. That was an experiment. We've had a few people over from Belgium doing sound art. I really do like to play it up a lot. And we're looking now, this year, we're on the hunt, making a list of a variety of locations which are not typical gig venues. And we're planning a few secret gigs later in the year, which will be uh, intimate arches, caves, old shop fronts, things like that, you know? So yes. I think it's great. At our regular gigs, even, I still try to get things involved with the... Um, I like to, I'd like to project the artwork of a band over the band while they're playing across the stage. But a lot of them I encourage to have other things. So a lot of them have films. I've got a band on the Faith Melter this Friday in Camden. They want to put on some David Attenborough documentaries while they're playing. I think that's great. Uh, they just think it goes with their sound, and they love David Attenborough. And I'm like, I'll, I do too. That's fair enough. That's great. So I just like people trying out new things and making it a little bit more different than a gig in a pub. Because we're, we're, we've outgrown that and we don't want to do that. And I think people should make it at an event. So yes, I do that. Yes, I see a lot of that in many, many regions. And I'm constantly inspired by the things people do to make an event an event rather than a gig. And I think we should keep trying to push ourselves creatively and collaborating with all kinds of people. So yeah, good question. Yes, Tommy. I think just like uh, Frank said in one of his comments, it's about the experience now. Yeah. Everything is going for free digital music, you know, no context around it. I think the context is what we need to create. The experience, you know, when people, when somebody attends to our gig. Yeah, totally, man. Even major signed artists are doing it. Amon Tobin has done the whole iFam thing, which is by with Tessa Farmer. He did the whole audiovisual collaboration where he was inside a 24 foot by 15 foot by 8 foot deep cuboid artistic thing, which has projected all this art, uh, this visuals based around the shape of the thing, and he's in the middle making music, which is based around the visuals. And uh, you have uh, Bonobo doing something amazing and massive in uh, November. We've got. Uh, Bjork, who did Biophilia, which was a whole interactive experience. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that even major artists are pushing themselves because they realize that the, you know, people are downloading stuff and we really want to make, put the money in, back into gigs and justify the live experience, which is kind of what I love and I want to be a part of that. So, yeah, totally, we should all be a part of that. We're all here, we want to be a part of that, don't we? So, um, yeah, so I think that's great. So, yeah, get imaginative, get creative. So, okay, so let's go for one last question. Give you a best shot. Who persists more? Fight. Ah. 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 Sam. Um, I'm going to try and really quickly put two in there. Um, <laughs> um, one of them, for me, the most important thing, um, is you haven't mentioned mailing list at all. And for me, that um, is something that has taken it from hoping someone might see something on Facebook about it to being able to actually um, actively put it in their hands almost. Um, like, for example, you know, you play a gig. And there's a few people that might like you, and unless they go out of their way to then check you out online, there's a small chance of you actually like following through with them. But if you then have someone, or even yourself, go up to them with your mailing list on a clipboard saying, Are you interested in this? If you sign up here, you get a free download. Um, there's a lot more chance that they're going to carry on and being, continue being a fan, which I think is a massive thing. Um, and another thing on the actual live performance thing, because I, I, I thought it was more about the kind of actually being on stage live performing, was. How do you deal with a noisy crowd? Right, well, uh, that's, first of all, yeah, mailing list is an, an amazing idea. I've built a lot of the KL3 fan base on the mailing list that we do, and I tell artists to do it. And the ones who go far do use mailing lists. So, yeah, uh, definitely I would include that. Yeah, that's, that's an extension of merch that is more active and proactive. And don't wait for them to come to you. 
if you've got room, go around the room and definitely make, put it in people's hands because they're more impulsed again to sign. And noisy crowds, yes. All right, if you play quiet music and you're in a noisy crowd, uh, I compare the gigs and make sure everyone shuts the hell up first. And uh, we have a respectful crowd and you go and tell people, shall I stand up? Will that be more like, polite and engaging? But uh, yeah, um, you've got to definitely talk to people and introduce the band and all that. If you're in a musician and you're not running the night yourself, I've seen a variety of techniques musicians use, but first and foremost, introduce yourself clearly. Be the compare. Be that. You've got to be fearless in, in, in all of this. In all of this, we've got to step outside our comfort zone and do things that we're terrified of doing, maybe. And I am terrified of pretty much everything that has gone into chaos theory. I don't like... Instinctively, I didn't like doing it. It's not, it didn't come naturally to me. It's not what I was about as a person. But you grow into it. It becomes easier every time. And one thing is, introduce yourself clearly and... Um, I saw a couple of musicians who were playing very ambient music just stood there and just went shh into the mic. And the crowd just went Whoa. And then they go like that. And then between songs as well, don't be afraid. I mean, be polite about it. You don't have to tell them to shut the hell up or something. Just say like, hey, guys, OK, guys, it's great that you're really excited, having a great time, but really, really nerve-wracking up here. I'm really nervous. It would be really helpful if you, I don't know, help, help me out and just quiet it down a little bit, something like that. I mean, there's only so much you can do, but again, that comes from picking the right kind of gigs. I mean, if you've checked out a venue and a promoter a few times and you know that they have respectful audiences, you're more likely to get a better experience than if you go to a gig which is basically there to generate money at the bar and it's more about keeping a busy bar on a Friday night of people drinking and chatting over you while you're kind of in the background. Have we all played those kind of gigs? Yeah, well, don't do them. Uh, so, yeah, so, uh, yeah, but I mean, sometimes it's just not going to go our way, but again, you can take advantage, and remember, there's always somebody who will be paying attention. Focus on them. Don't let the, the ones who aren't bothered knock your confidence and ruin your attitude for the whole night. There's somebody in there who you might reach, so focus on the ones who are out there. But yeah, I would say introduce yourself. Don't be afraid to stop people in the middle, in the middle of your song, in between the songs, not in the middle. And, uh, and uh, yeah, just, just uh, engage with the audience. They'll tend, to, they'll tend to pay more attention that way. Unless you absolutely suck, in which case, go back to dance point. Even if it's... Don't... It does happen. Don't... I'll just add to that. Um, don't apologise. I've seen so many bands and artists go up there and they go to anyone that cares and their shoulders are all oh, slumped God, or anything no. and you just think, you've lost me. I'm going to go get a drink. But yeah. the, it's the guys that... Some have not been particularly great artists, but I've, I've been engaged because they st stand there, they smile, they engage the audience, and they, you know, and, and they've, they've got my... You, okay, you're selling it. Um, don't apologise. No, agreed. Uh, don't... Be, be confident. You're, you should be proud of what you're doing. You should, have not, you should be proud of what you're doing. And you know what? We're, I'm here to play to people who want to hear it. So, and there are people here who want to hear it, and they can't because of some other people. So, yeah, you're right. Be confident in your... I'll leave it to Tommy to choose who speaks. Yeah, well, actually, I will speak. Okay. <laughs> It, it, it's the last thing where I see people start getting tired, but I, I want to make a point about the mailing list. So what I've seen that works both in my music and darker music talks. I mean, lately I've stopped making music because I'm focusing on that, but it works amazingly with darker music talks, right? And I, I think it's just because it's human psychology. It's not anything special. It can work with anything. So first of all, you need to create a culture around the people that attend your events. First of all, you need to have something that is worth talking about. I mean, this is something that you talk about it because it's something worth talking about. If, if the music, you know, if the performance, the experience is not worth talking about, nobody will come. Use Facebook, use Twitter, use mailing list. Nobody will come over. That's it. They will discover you. They will go. People coming over and over, that's really a big win, you know, because you get people out. You, you make them stand up from their couches to come over and maybe pay and maybe buy stuff. That's precious, right? So first of all, that's it. Create a culture. Have an amazing product. Second of all, I've seen that what works perfect is three channels of communication. So number one, mailing list. Don't, don't use it all the time. I use two times, I've sent two emails before each event. First of all, I announce it. People start coming. They, they say, all right, I'm coming over. I use Eventbrite, so I know who's coming. And then it's just a couple of days before the event that I send a second email as a, as a reminder. I used to send just one email, but then people told me, oh, I never, I never opened this email. And then you miss out, you know, because some people, they want to come over. And then I make sure that in the meanwhile, if, the, if there is any other band, you know, if there is any, uh, any, anybody else co-organizing, make sure you have this buzz on social media, at, l at least two channels. 
right? And this way, you get people excited. They come over because they see that other people are coming over as well. It's not just them. This is, this is, a, this is a big barrier you need to overcome to make sure that people know that some other people are coming. And it's more likely that they will come over. From, from, from these people here, 60%, they got the ticket the last two days. I announced it eight days before the event. This means a lot. It's the momentum, right? Um, yeah, and I think it's about collaboration again. Whoever is in there, you're on the same, you're, you're on the same cause, you know, just talk about each other, tag them, you know. I forgot to tag Kunal, and he wrote a comment and he tagged himself. I'm like, sorry, really sorry. I'm a self-promoting asshole. But that's it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Be, be the self-promoting ass. But anyways, th this is what I have to say. I mean, uh, and if you can find one innovative way each time, try to experiment and not use Facebook at all. Use something else. Launch it through a partner, through another band. Let another band announce your gig or whatever you might think about. I did a treasure hunt. Some people showed up because of the treasure hunt. Some people, because these people that showed up because of the treasure hunt talked about it. Some blogs talked about it. That was interesting. So find innovative ways. So e mailing list, two social media channels, and one innovative way each time. I think you're going to bring people and then build momentum and have an amazing experience worth talking about. Uh, for me, this is what works practically. Yeah, you've got to get creative as well. Like this one band I work with hid download codes around the venue in the week leading up to the event. And then it came with a little message on the back of it, just uh, you can download this uh, preview of this album and uh, here's a link to the tickets. Simple as. You know, little things you can do to be creative and take it a bit to another level. Uh, yeah, uh, I, as we've got to wrap up, I'm a self-promoting asshole. Uh, if you want to follow Chaos Theory, there's free stuff around if you don't want it. We're online on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that. So do find it, Chaos Theory Music or Chaos Theory London or something like that. And uh, find out about our gigs and hopefully you'll find some wonderful musicians to network with. Because you're there a lot, both of you. And I'm sure you find people who you want to work with. So, uh, yeah. Uh, we'll, are we allowed to talk now or what do we do? <laughs> it's over. It's over. Thank you, Tommy. Oh, and uh, thank you to Andre from London Fusion. Yeah, he, he, he will do the tour. All the tea. I love you. And thank you for coming. Cheers. Whoever this might concern, if you're interested, no. here, here is Andre that facilitates the whole event, so he would like to say a few things. Don't worry, I never get attacked by Tommy either. So. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of things I noticed from um, Nell's great presentation. One was. Don't you look like Elvis? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think he wants to be Elvis. Yeah. Another thing was he made an observation about um, artists who have got the same track on their MySpace. <laughs> I'll use it then. Got the same track on their MySpace for four years and not really making any progress. Um, so I'll tell you, I meet a lot of people like this too. So I work for London Fusion. What we do is we work with small and medium enterprises, so that can be a one-man band business up to a business turning over millions of pounds. And they have to be in the creative industries in London. So creative industries can be anything from film, music, if you're using technology, anything you're doing, we can help you as a business or enterprise grow. So a lot of you might be saying to yourself, I'm not a business or enterprise. That's fine. If you just want to be an artist and define yourself that way, that's okay too. But um, what we've realized is that um, sometimes, especially in this music industry, the way things are now, you need to be redefining how you see yourself, redefining your roles, and redefining the structure you work under. Um, so I think it's pretty important, and um, Tommy does as well, which is why he does this. So does for now, and so do most of the speakers we get here. And there are lots of people in this audience too who have worked with us, who have realized the benefits of approaching their craft in a more business-like way presenting themselves in a more business-like way. Not being frightened to go to companieshouse.com, pay 20 pounds and register a limited company. Not being frightened to talk to, to the um, Majesty's tax office and see whether they can claim back some of their costs as well as just by paying a bit of tax every year. Maybe you can claim back more than you're actually paying. Um, so if you're prepared to define yourself as a business or you're already doing that, then we'd like to talk to you. We can help you with lots of things from workshops in social media to business models to working with universities if you need certain expertise you can't get hold of to just sitting down and having someone to complain about your problems to <laughs> I get I get that too I get that too yeah so I'm um, sometimes as a business owner or entrepreneur you just want to 
maybe just share your, share your issues and have someone reflect back to you some solutions. So we can even do that. So if you're interested, um, there's lots of flyers at the table at the front, or you can try and grab me before the end. I won't be talking very much today after this, so I'll probably just give you a card and say a few things and then get you to call me next week. But um, if you're already a business or you want to be, then I'm quite happy to talk to you and to help you get a bit further. So thanks, Tommy. I know everyone's really tired, so I'll let you go. Thanks for coming. And um, yeah, until the next Darker Music Talks, I'll see you all then. Thank you. Right. I know everybody's tired. I'm not tired, so you shouldn't be tired. There is something really... Th that's an argument. I mean, it's fair enough. <laughs> so it it's really important every time I want to have an artist to talk uh, from their perspective about their story, five, ten minutes. That's really important to, to see what other artists think about. So today we're going to have our friend Felipe. He's going to say, I don't know what he's going to say, but let's see. Hey, everybody. Uh, I just want to share this uh, experience we're going to have with a band I work with. And it goes with what you were talking about, experiments. We are having this release where we want to involve all the five senses of our bodies into the experience of music. So we want to create a space where we just don't listen to music or see the, the projections, but we can also smell something to represent the song or taste something. Or the idea began like, you know when you go to a show and you listen to an intro and you know what song it's going to be because you're a really good fan and like this means that they're going to play this. How about if we're in a venue and the temperature just changes and we realize this is going to be a song or it smells like something else. So we're going to do a release where it's a song about the Amazonas. I'm from Colombia. And Colombia, yeah. <laughs> Woo! We're in the World Cup, so I'm happy. <laughs> and this is a song we did when we went to the jungle in the Amazonas, and this is an instrumental song. And we did want it to share the whole experience of being in the jungle. So people will be here, will uh, feel the temperature of the Amazonas, will listen to our music, but we'll also have a taste of Colombian drinks, and we'll also smell a bit of the jungle. And this is more like an invitation to everybody here. I'm sure I can send you like the invitation and you can send it. Everybody is invited. It's going to be in two weeks from now. Yeah, 15th of April. So feel welcome and just like experiment. There's a lot of, there's a lot of more ways to do, to create experiences through live music. So just to share, it's, it's, I think it's an interesting idea involving other senses into music. And that would be it. I'll send you an email before I sleep. If, if, whenever you receive the email, that's the time I'm going to sleep. <laughs> I'll send you an email with that. So. Correct. Cheers. <laughs> and that was it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got useful lessons out of this. Hello. The, <laughs> what's the name of the band? Very good. You learn anything in the lecture, did you? <laughs> There's merchandise outside of the band, so you can buy our CDs. It's called Sound the CD. Right, great. So that's it. It's a tradition every time we finish. What? Felipe from Colombia. Are you brothers? <laughs> you're from you're from Colombia. Colombians. Anyways, it's a tradition. Every time there is a pub, we always go there. We have a drink. We talk. Join us. I hope you like this today. It happens every month. It's a thing that happens the first week of each month, and I'll be glad to see you again, so we all can learn and interact with each other. Thank you very much. Have a good night.